So I think some interesting conversations we've heard both in the keynotes this morning and also in the, in the panel discussion. For my presentation, I was going to start by, I guess, challenging you, challenging you to think differently. Think about the workplace and how it's changing. I think we've already had that question answered. Apparently, the workplace of the future now is actually the, an animal enclosure in Adelaide Zoo. To me, I think it's just a great example of how you can take collaboration beyond the traditional environments that we usually think of. We think of collaborating at our desktop. We think of collaborating in a traditional meeting room. But there's a huge amount of space within there where we can gain real benefits from collaboration, irrespective of the environment around us. And I think it's fair to say, and I think Australia is, is very much ahead of the curve in recognizing the changing nature of work in the workplace. I think you only need to look at the acceleration of cloud adoption within Australia and how that is helping businesses transform and introduce new processes. But we're also clearly working in a global economy. And again, I think the location of Australia uh, helps cement that. You know, and, and obviously, you're going through a, an interesting economic challenge at the moment with what's, what's shifting in terms of you know, um, the resources, et cetera. So companies have to be smarter. They have to operate more effectively, more efficiently. They have to make better use of the talent that's within their organization. They have to be able to connect and communicate around the globe. And we also have to recognize that the environment in which those people are operating, not just the markets, the economy, the global connectivity that's changing, but the physical spaces are changing as well. Polycom did some research along with a company called Steelcase. Many may, of you may know them. They're one of the leading providers of office workspace solutions, which I think is the new terminology for an office furniture supplier. Um, but they're one of the leading organizations in that space. And, and we did a joint survey with them. And the results, I think, whilst not surprising, do cement a lot of what we've been talking about. That within the organizations, this survey was done in the US, but 71% of people within the organization surveyed, and they surveyed about 1,000 organizations, work remotely at least some, if not all, of the time. 34% of organizations employ freelancers to add value into their organization on a project basis, on an as-needed basis. 70% of those organizations have some level of open space workplace. You'll hear terms like activity-based working, project-based working. I mean, it's a bit of a cliche now, but you know, work is not a place you go to. Work is the activity that you do. And then the other statistic was 75% of organizations expect that, sorry, 75% of workers within organizations will be Gen Y within the next 10 years. Now, I live in Singapore. Singapore is full of Gen Ys. I'll give you an impression of Singapore. I don't have my phone with me, but it's, it's the people walking down here, down the street, and you'll see them in Singapore, and you have to walk around them. You have to get out of the way, because they're in the zone. They're in the smartphone zone. But these are the people that, if they're not in the workplace today, they're going to be in the workplace tomorrow. As was mentioned in the keynote, they're growing up with social networking tools. They're totally comfortable in front of video. They expect video. That's how they live their personal lives. That's how they're going to expect to connect, communicate, and collaborate in the workplace. So all of these factors, as I say, are starting to influence how organizations now look at getting the best out of their human capital and get the most productivity out of their organization. And certainly, as you would expect within Polycom, we absolutely believe that now is the time for organizations to be looking at collaboration, whether it's from the traditional meeting room, whether it's at the desktop, whether it's in the, the mobile workspace, remote workers, and everything in between. We have a concept that we talk about within Polycom where we talk about defying distance. And that distance can be the gap between information knowledge within one building, people on different floors, people in departments that maybe are not connecting, collaborating efficiently. It can also be the distance between a branch office that's maybe in uh, South Australia and a headquarters in New South Wales. Or it can be a design expert in California with a field sales operation in Australia. All of those are examples where you need to conquer distance. You need to connect and collaborate effectively and really not be challenged by the fact that you may be either technically disconnected or physically disconnected. It was interesting hearing uh, Bill from Plantronics talk about their three pillars. I think he called them, it was uh, bytes, behaviors, and, and bricks. Within Polycom, we look at 
how we define the workplace of the future with three key tenants. We think you need to look at the workspace. The workspace is the physical environment where people are operating, working from, and connecting from. You need to look at their experience. How are they going to use these tools? How are they going to use these technologies and get the most from them? We've heard already about some of the challenges about user adoption and how you make it easy for organizations to deploy and adapt to new technologies. And the experience is definitely part of that. It needs to be easy. It needs to be intuitive. But it also needs to adapt to some of those new workspace environments that are emerging. And I'll talk about that in a moment. And then probably most importantly, you have to look at the workflow. Collaboration needs to be a natural extension of how people are working today, how the tools they're using today can be uh, collaboration enabled at the click of a button. I've been in the video conferencing business for many years, for 17 years, and probably for the last 15 years of those, it's been a special thing. You go to the special room at the end of the corridor, which if the executives aren't using it, you might be allowed in if you're special and you're really nice to the admin, and you use this special technology to connect to somewhere else. Those days are gone. We talked about the Gen Y. Clearly, we all know the value and the power of Skype for business. Collaboration needs to be a click of a button in the tool that I'm using today maybe for scheduling a meeting, I'm using it tomorrow for instant message, and I'm adding audio, I'm adding video, literally at the touch of a button without having to be trained on how to do that. So we'll just delve into each of these areas just in a little bit more detail. First of all, the modern work environment. As I say, it used to be either cubicle hell or your own office if you were important enough, and pretty much nothing in between. Well, I think the reality is, and we're all aware of this now, that workspaces have completely changed. Some organizations are further along the curve of change than others, but we now have to consider all of these types of environments where users may want to connect and collaborate from. Whether it's the individual refuge, maybe a landing point for visitors in a remote office, whether it's the huddle room, tends to be kind of the common term at the moment, where you get two or three people together, through to the traditional meeting rooms, the larger presentation auditoriums, but not forgetting the home workers, the remote workers. As you might expect within Polycom, we're a global organization. I know my colleagues here in Australia, myself in Singapore, we all get the ridiculous calendar invites for meetings at ridiculous times. Sometimes you choose to join them, sometimes you maybe politely refuse, or, or maybe less politely refuse if it's 3 a.m. I was on a call last night from my workplace of the future at midnight. That was my hotel room up in North Sydney. That is a workplace of the future. I have my laptop. I have my collaboration tools. I can connect and collaborate from anywhere. So we need tools that can create connectivity and a positive value-added user experience across all of these environments. Whether it's the controlled workspace, where, again, we heard from, from Bill at Plantronics about some of the acoustic engineering to make it a better audio environment for collaboration. But what if it's a collaboration space? What if it's an open um, environment, a project-based or activity-based workspace? How do you then help with the collaboration tools, but yet not have the spillover of noise from the next project that's going on 10 yards down the, down the building? And then how do we ensure a consistent experience across the bring your own device, the personal desktop, your smart device? These are some of the problems that Sony Polycom sets out to solve, and along working with Microsoft, try and ensure that we create that seamless connectivity for users to enable them to collaborate from any of these workspaces. A short introduction, really, for those that are not aware about the relationship that Polycom has with Microsoft. Many of you, I'm sure, know Polycom, obviously, for our audio conferencing devices, our iconic sound station, and also our video conferencing devices. But we actually have a very long history of working with Microsoft, and I'm going to show my age here. So we started working and ensuring our solutions fully interoperated with Microsoft with their LCS 2005 platform and OCS 2007, Link 2010, Link 2013, and now Skype for Business. So for those of you that have been in the UC business for a while, you'll know that Polycom has been investing a lot of time and effort along with Microsoft to create this technical value-add <coughs> partnership so that you can ensure whatever solutions you're investing in today, or you may have already invested in, will work seamlessly with the Microsoft environment as it evolves and continues to grow and add value. 
This was an example actually of the relationship we had Zig from Microsoft at Polycom's partner event back in February where they actually previewed the first Skype for business video call integrated with Polycom for the first time anywhere in the globe up on stage at our event. So certainly within, within Polycom we were very excited by that and I think you know, it shows the value of the relationship that's there. So diving a little bit deeper now in terms of how do we address some of these requirements? How do we address delivering collaboration in those different workspaces? I just want to give you a few examples. If we start with that smaller, lower end of the environment, we see huge potential here. Talking to Microsoft, they, ex they believe that there are around 10 million meeting rooms in the world that are currently enabled with collaboration tools there are potentially another 40 or 50 million where value can be added through simple cost-effective collaboration. Now, of course, you can take your PC, your laptop, into a refuge space, into a, maybe a small huddle room or enclave space, and do collaboration from there. But it's not necessarily going to be the best-in-class experience. So Polycom has worked with Microsoft, and we've introduced the Roundtable 100. This was launched at the uh, Ignite conference back in Chicago not long ago. So it's a self-contained device. The key thing here is this solves the challenge that we heard about earlier of identity. If I'm walking into that environment, how do I, as Nick Hawkins, connect and collaborate with my colleagues? The key thing with the Roundtable 100, it's driven by your app on your smartphone. You use your Skype for business identity. It knows who you are when you walk in the room. It allows you to control the device and connect to your meeting that you need to be in. So it solves that identity problem. And unified collaboration and communications is all about identity. You know, I look at my colleagues in the room here. I don't want to connect to extension 1234. I want to connect with Paul. I want to connect with Mark. Because that's the person I want to reach out to. That's the person that's got the information and knowledge that I need to enable me to complete my activities. So this is just one example. It's been announced. It's going to be available in, in the summer. Um, I think certainly a, a very interesting solution to bring collaboration at a very cost-effective price point to those meeting rooms where maybe in the past, as organizations, you've thought, can I really justify that? Should I really be investing in that environment? Then, of course, we move into the more traditional meeting room type space where you've got maybe a slightly larger audience, you know, three or four people up to maybe even auditoriums and, and larger, larger rooms. Again, some great examples of solutions available here, whether it's the round table that was mentioned before that's now a Polycom product or the link room systems. Again, the key thing here is delivering that Skype for business experience, irrespective of whether it's on a laptop whether it's on a small room environment with the Roundtable 100, or whether it's in a full-blown meeting room environment. Consistent identity, potentially. Consistent experience for the users. Consistent functionality. These are key things that ensure you get successful adoption of collaboration within your organization. And then what about solutions that kind of spread across the whole range? You know, there's still the desire for many people to pick up the handset. It's been an ongoing debate in the world of IP telephony. The handset is dead. No, it's not. Yes, it is. You talk to Plantronics, they'll probably sit somewhere in the middle and say, yeah, you don't need the handset, but if you do, we can attach a headset to it. And it's been one of those ongoing debates probably for the last certainly five or ten years as to whether the telephony handset will die or not. I think the reality is it's still going to be around for a long time. But if you've got users who expect that more traditional model of picking the, the handset up, talking into the handset, how do you ensure that they're part of the overall Skype for Business experience, the presence and identity-based experience that Skype for Business brings? So again, Polycom's focused on our award-winning IP range of phones that not only support OpenSIP, but have full support for Microsoft as well. So you can deploy these phones in a Skype for Business environment. You can bring presence and identity to those phones. And yet it's a traditional telephony environment. You can add a camera on to some of them. So then you can actually video enable that, either at deployment time or in the future. So again, it's that consistency of experience, the consistency of identity that, again, delivers collaboration really across the whole range of environments. And let's not forget the traditional meeting room, the traditional video environments. Some of you in your organizations, you may have already made existing investments in more traditional video spaces. 
How do you ensure that that investment is continued and you can bring the value of that investment into a Skype for business environment? And I'll touch on that a little bit later in the presentation. So as we talked about, it's not just, it's, a, it's about, first of all, understanding the physical user experience, sorry, the physical workspace. Where are the users going to connect to? How are they going to use the technology? And then it's looking at how do we ensure that that user experience is intuitive? I heard a phrase once, somebody said, a user interface is like a joke. If you have to explain it, it's not very good. So we have to ensure that our user experiences are consistent that users do not need training, that they can walk in. And in the same way, something as simple maybe is even just the clicker. I got a right arrow, I got a left arrow. Pretty intuitive what that's going to do in terms of driving my PowerPoint presentation. It's about ensuring we have that same level of simplicity. And again, that comes back to the value of delivering Skype for business integration on the desktop, on the IP handset, in the small meeting room, in the large meeting room. It's giving you that consistent, always-on, identity-based connection experience. But there are other factors that need to be considered when you're looking at the user experience that tie back into the changing workplace. We heard from Bill earlier about Plantronics about the fact they've done some audio engineering. How do you deaden the sound to ensure you don't get spillover from one activity-based workspace into another? We are bringing that same kind of rigor, that same kind of intellectual problem solving to collaboration tools itself. So we've introduced some technologies that we call acoustic fencing. What does that mean? That means if I'm using Polycom's collaboration tools and I'm in an open workspace environment here connecting to my colleagues maybe in Singapore or in the US, we can use our audio experience, our audio engineering experience to create a virtual barrier. So I can have an additional microphone that understands what's going on in the background around me. And it, the system knows to just transmit the audio from this space within the fence and not transmit the audio that's in this space outside the fence. So when my colleagues are discussing the state of origins rugby game behind me while I'm trying to actually connect and do some work, the people on the far end won't hear them. Or if, as you can tell, I'm originally from the UK, if we're discussing the sorry state of English cricket, then again, we can ensure that the rest of the world doesn't hear that because they're outside of the fence. So these are just some of the thinking, some of the challenges that have to be overcome as you bring collaboration outside of the meeting room and outside of the desktop and take it to these new workspaces. It's also about having technologies that automate the experience. I can tell you that there is still a fear factor in the vast majority of non-technical users when they walk into a meeting room and they see a camera and they see a remote control. They don't want to touch it. They're concerned they might break something. So the more that the experience can be automated, that it can be streamlined, but ensure you're still delivering a best-in-class collaboration experience, then the better it is for everybody. So we're actually demonstrating the technology out in our booth with what, something we call Eagle Eye Producer. This is just an add-on to a Polycom video solution. And what it does is it automatically scans the room, identifies the faces of people in the room, and then instructs the camera to frame the room appropriately. If you've ever been on a video conference and the person on the far end is in a long meeting room, the camera's zoomed out and their head's about that big. Well, that's not a real value-add video collaboration session. If their head is about five pixels by five pixels, I'm not getting the true value of face-to-face -face interaction. But if they don't want to pick up the remote control, if they don't want to drive the technology, let's see if we can automate that so we get a best-in-class experience. There's another value add that comes from that. And because we can identify the number of faces in the room and frame the camera, we know how many people are in each meeting room. If you've ever been sat designing a new office and you say, how many meetings room do we need? Do we need two meeting rooms that see 10 people each? Do we need four meeting rooms that seat five people each? Do we need one ten and two five? Typically, it's a, let's have a guess. Let's see what we're doing today. Let's see what people are complaining about, and let's see if we can work around that. Solutions such as Eagle Eye Producer give you hard data. You know how many people are in each room for each meeting. You know how many people started, the average, and how many people were there at the end. This is information that helps organizations do better planning 
do better rollout, make more efficient and effective use of physical space, and ensure they're delivering the right kind of collaboration tools. So all of this comes together really to help ensure that you have the information you need to design that workspace of the future and ensure you're delivering, as I say, the most effective needs that your organization uh, is asking for. So we've talked about the physical workspace. We've talked about the user experience. The last piece I want to touch on really is just looking at the business workflow. I mentioned before, it needs to be integrated into the user experience. Whatever the user's digital work habits are, whatever tools they're using, for example, for scheduling, collaboration needs to be an automatic extension of that. Within Polycom, we've obviously put a lot of time and effort into this. We want to ensure that the link, oh, that's $2, sorry, the Skype for Business user experience is seamless and is accessible to all irrespective of whether you're on a desktop. But what about if you've already invested in Polycom video environments, or maybe third-party video environments from Polycom, but not from Polycom, that maybe don't support Skype for Business integration? How do you ensure that you maximize that investment? How do you ensure that it's a seamless, streamlined workflow that delivers value to your users? So we've done a lot of investigation around user habits, and we found a couple of key things. Most Skype for business video calls are scheduled. They're calendared. And typically that's being done through Outlook and it's ticking the box that in the past was link enabled meetings, now is Skype for business enabled meetings. You tick the box, it puts the information in that you need and if you're a user who is connecting from your link client, nothing is simpler. You have a hyperlink, you connect and you're in the meeting. You've got audio, you've got video. They're collaborating with my session. This is, this is the workplace of the future. Um, but by just simply clicking the hyperlink that's in the meeting invite, you obviously connect with your Skype for Business client, and you've got audio, you've got video, and you've got content integration directly within that Skype for Business client. Very, very, very useful. But what if your organization hasn't maybe deployed Skype for Business enabled video meeting room systems? Maybe the six of you in an office in Sydney, it makes sense for you to gather in a meeting room space. Are you all going to take your laptops in there and do six Skype for Business sessions from that meeting room? Are you all going to stay at your desk and connect? But what if there's already maybe a Polycom video system in there? How do you bring all of this together and ensure a seamless connected experience with a seamless integrated workflow? So these are some of the challenges that Polycom spends a lot of time trying to solve. So we introduced something called Polycom Real Connect. At its simplest, it enables a Skype for Business environment on one side and a traditional video environment on the other side to connect seamlessly, share content, share audio, share video. The key thing here is the user experience from either side of the equation is 100% consistent. If I'm on the Skype for Business side, I click the hyperlink, I connect from my Skype for Business client. Everything I do in a meeting, irrespective of whether it's 100% pure Skype for Business or whether it's taking advantage of Polycom Real Connect. But if I'm on a traditional video system, what do I do? I go into the meeting invite, which I would do anyway. And instead of clicking the hyperlink, there's a number that I can dial. Or if I've enabled my video meeting room systems from Polycom, there's a join now button on the user interface on the video system. It's not connecting necessarily using Skype for Business. It's using traditional protocols like H323 or SIP. But the magic all happens in the infrastructure and the solutions connect directly together. If you want to go 100% Skype for Business integration, then the Polycom solutions will register directly into the server. But if you've got environments where, as I say, maybe you're not ready to make that step yet, you can connect that traditional video deployment into Skype for Business and give you a seamless experience. And then maybe in the future, you're registered directly into the Skype for Business server. So just to give you a quick idea of what the workflow looks like, and the great thing here is it's a standardized workflow. I go into Outlook, I Skype for Business enable a meeting. You get all of the familiar information that you would expect for a Skype for Business meeting. If I'm joining from a Skype for Business client, I click the hyperlink, it couldn't be simpler. From a video system, I can click the Join Now button if I'm on a Polycom environment. But even if I'm not in a Polycom environment, 
I've got a conference ID number. I pick up the remote control, I dial that number. Job done. I'm connected. And it's not just audio, and it's not just video. For us, certainly within Polycom, we see content is actually the probably single most important element of a meeting. People don't gather to talk about the weather. People don't gather to talk about the cricket. Well, unless, unfortunately, you're English, and then the Australians will just give you hell, quite rightly. But there's always content to be shared in a meeting. A PowerPoint presentation, a contract document, financial forecasts and spreadsheets. There's always information to be shared. So it's important that that content is both where the user expects it to be and that the users can connect and collaborate. So that's a lot of what the Real Connect experience is about. It's not just about having audio and video going from a standards-based client to a Skype for Business client or a link client and back again. But it's about ensuring that the content is available to the traditional video user. The content is available to the Skype for Business user. And that the content is where the Skype for Business user expects it. If it pops up in a separate window, then the user's going to go, or if it pops up in the video stream, Skype for Business user's going to go, my client's broken. They're going to call the IT help desk. So it's important that this experience is 100% consistent, irrespective of the environment you're connecting to. So what I would say really just in summary from Polycom is think about the workplace of the future. The journey is underway, I think, for probably each and every one of you in the room today. Organizations are evolving how they connect and collaborate. The physical workspaces are changing. The users coming into the workspace are definitely changing. And if they're not demanding video-enabled, presence-enabled collaboration tools today, they'll be demanding that tomorrow. The user experience you have to think about. It has to be consistent. It has to be streamlined. And it has to integrate directly into existing workflows. Look at your existing tools, look at existing investments you've made, maybe in video solutions, in voice solutions, and look at how you can then bring all of that together into a Skype for business-enabled workflow. So with my last slide, I guess I would challenge you to, to think differently. This is the new normal. This is the way organizations are connecting and collaborating today. Your organization may be well down that path. Your organization may be just starting on that journey. But look at those workspaces, look at the user requirements, the workflows, look at the existing investments you've made, and then work with organizations like Polycom, like Generation E, and obviously with you know, Microsoft and Skype for Business at the core of that, and see how you can deliver true collaboration to your businesses. So with that, I'd like to just thank you very much for your time. Thank you to Generation E for the opportunity to present. Jay, so I'll hand back to you.